Hey, everybody. Um, so we're going to do a uh, Q&A today all about podcasting. And I do have a little bit of a tech problem that I'm not going to solve right now. I'm just not going to solve it. I know. There's some like popping going on. I was trying to I was trying to uh, switch it out before uh, the actual thing, and it's the popping is only worse now. So it's pretty great. I think one of my one of my pieces of equipment is finally failing, and that's awesome. Jeez, <laughs> oh, because you know nothing like having a podcast Q and A with a broken piece of equipment, <laughs> <laughs> right? But you know, then again, I have a, a lot more. Wow, there's a lot of popping. Yeah, there is a lot of popping. I can wow. hear it now. Wow. It's all over the place. Oof. I couldn't hear it before either. Wow. Uh, yes, the Yeti is, is monstrous. Um, we are going to be doing... Well, here's uh, a few of the things that we're going to be covering today. We're going to be covering um, the differences between the different platforms like... Like podcasting versus YouTube versus uh, maybe blog. I I might talk about blogging real quick. Um, and there, uh, we'll talk about mics for sure. Uh, the microphone that I'm using is uh, it's not actually popping. That is the piece of equipment that is failing. So you'll have to excuse that. <laughs> Damn it. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's so bad. It's so bad. Um, and I'm going to just make sure that uh, you guys are hearing what I'm hearing. Hold on. What? Yeah, see, L-O-T-I podcast is, it sounds like a peaceful campfire in the background. It kind of it does. does. It kind of sounds like we're on the Yule Log right now. Yep. That's it. That's what we're going to That's what we're gonna say. <laughs> no, it's, not, it's probably not that bad on your end. But it's noticeable on mine, so it's going to be kind of a thing. Um, now if you guys are interested in learning more about, uh, podcasting and about, uh, kind of like, you know, if you're, especially if you're, uh, let's call you a fledgling podcaster. Um, I am writing a quick start guide f to podcasting that will give you, um, equipment advice, software, uh, recommendations, kind of the basics of what you need to know to get going in podcasting. And it's, yes, it's a, it's an overview, but that's why it's a quick start guide and not a book. Um, if I want to write a book, it's going to take me a little bit longer. Uh, so therefore, you know, it's, it's just going to take me longer and helping me out, uh, as always is Jules, uh, Jules Scott is in the background and she will be looking for, uh, your questions along the way. Um, yes, sir. try to find out what you guys want to know more about. Uh, she will also probably be popping in links along the way, uh, for some of the different recommendations that I have and, uh, so on. So yeah, you guys, if you have questions throughout the time in the chat room, let me know. I'll make sure that Pat gets them. Whoops. Um, and, uh, we'll, we'll try and cover everything we can for you. I knocked out my headphones again. Oh, <laughs> oh no. so, you know, no big deal. I just couldn't hear you for a minute. I'm guessing that you said stuff. So I did. I said, you know, <laughs> they got questions. We'll get them answered. Yes. I think that works. Yes. Yes, we will. <laughs> so let's talk briefly about um, while we kind of get set up and while more people come in, hopefully, and, and everything like that. First of all, Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, and uh, let's talk a little bit about audio versus video versus whatever. Um, and I think that some people think that when they start a podcast, if you have an idea to do a podcast and not like a, not like a stream, not a YouTube, uh, not YouTube content, but a podcast, right? People think right away, I have to be on YouTube. I have to be streaming my show. I have to be doing all this other stuff. I have to blah, 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 right? Because yeah. you hear things like, YouTube has 1.3 billion users and you want to be in front of those guys. And you do, you do. Um, and you hear things like, uh, that they have, you know, they 1 billion videos get viewed every month or, or every day or 
whatever. There's 300 hours of content uploaded every minute on YouTube. Like YouTube is this big, huge thing and you want to be a part of it. And I would say you do, but there's a big but. Uh, let's just take a look at podcasts versus YouTube content. Okay. And let's use the 1.3 billion users of YouTube as kind of a guide. Just to talk a little bit about what you're up against. Um, if 1% of the people on YouTube are making content all the time, which they're not, which, there's more. There's more than 1% making content. That is 13 million people. That's, that's 13, people. that's 13 million active accounts. And that's just 1%, right? The amount of podcasts that are out there right now. Uh, I heard, well, I saw an article that said, a recent article that said it was 400,000 podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, and out of those podcasts, 60,000 are active. Meaning that, you know, along the way, either, either, you know, a few of them are my podcasts. So <laughs> a few of the dead ones are mine. Uh, you know, you realize after a certain time of doing a show that it's not working out, that it's not what you thought it was going to be, that you're not um, getting out of it what you want. And so sometimes that stuff just kind of goes away. Uh, so there are lots of dead podcasts out there. There's lots of podcasts out there that are three shows and out. Because, or one show and out, because the person either didn't know what they were doing, got frustrated and, and bailed out, uh, didn't have a plan going into it, and couldn't figure it out, wasn't getting any listens, and bailed, and they, they didn't know all this other stuff. There's a lot of frustration that can go along with your first few shows here, uh, and oh, so yeah. there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, uh, shows that are very short runs. Uh, and so 400,000 versus 13 million. I think if you want to start out creating content, creating audio content is going to be a lot easier. There's less competition. Uh, and there are fewer reasons that people can say no to you. When you're creating a video on YouTube, people can say no to you because, no, I have to go uh, drive to work. Well, if you're driving to work, you can take a podcast with you. You can take audio content with you. Um, and, you know, there's, so there's, there's fewer no's thrown at audio podcasts. Um, and the other thing is that, it, you know, you don't have to worry about the video side of it. There's less complication for you in producing that kind of stuff. Um, so it's, it's easier to do audio than it is to do video for sure. Uh, it's harder because the competition is more, is greater on YouTube, uh, and in blogs for that matter, there's lots and so many blogs. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how many blogs there are. Um, but there are millions and millions of blogs. So, just, sorry, I just have to, uh, had to turn you up a little bit there, Jules. Um, uh, but you know, it's, it's, so audio is, uh, by far, uh, in, in my mind anyway, if you're starting out in media and you say, I want to do something, I want to create content. I want to create media for people to, uh, connect with great. Maybe start in audio and it's pretty cheap. It's pretty cheap to, to get started in that stuff. Um, and there are caveats to that and, and warnings to go along with that. <laughs> um, uh, one of the warnings is you, you get out what you put in. So just understand that. Yeah. And we'll talk more about that as we, especially as we talk about equipment and software and all that kind of stuff. Uh, my experience with running, uh, especially with convert to raid. Uh, so with convert to raid, and I know that, uh, most everybody here knows that show or at least uh, understands that it's a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and Convert to Raid is, is a, it's a good-sized podcast, right? It's, it's not bad at all. 
Uh, and when we do, when we, we put up our videos every week, every show. Uh, so we have a presence on YouTube. We have a presence, uh, online and, and we also have, you know, the, the audio show. So, oh, and the Twitch stuff as well. Mm -hmm. So we do a live stream. We put the live stream to YouTube and then we have the audio thing posted as well. Our Twitch chat normally pretty small, pretty small. And I'm going to say, let's do the max that we've ever had. Probably like three, 400 when we have a dev on or something like that. Um, and, you know, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. The lowest we've had 10. I don't know. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of ranges widely and especially, um, you know, it depends on the time of year and all that kind of stuff. But usually it's around, I don't know, like 50 people maybe. Um, and that's that's a pretty good chat room. There's a lot of conversation going on. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, our YouTube videos, they do okay. Um, but compared to the audio side of things, it, it, doesn't even, it doesn't even really compare. So if you take a look at... Uh, the audio side versus YouTube. YouTube is about one twenty fifth, one twenty fifth, the amount of people watch the the video than they do listen to the show. And this that stat blew me away when 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 we looked at that when we researched it for yeah. for CTR. And when you talk about you know the the Twitch folks out there, there's like. It's uh, I don't even know how many thou thousandths of a percent that is of the audio crowd. I don't even know. I yeah. can't. I can't uh, math well. I like math. I just can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so but I think that the impression and, and you know for what the work that I do on podcasting as well, the percentages are the same, and I think that we have different perceptions as, as uh, audience members of where they're com consuming the audience and that the that podcast audio is so much bigger yeah. than we think it is. And, you know, the other reason to do podcasting other than, you know, uh, as opposed to YouTube videos is that it's a, it's a lot more intimate medium. Uh, you get inside your, your listener's head, literally. And, and figuratively. No, I mean, it's a very, it just is much more intimate. You can go in a lot of different places uh, and you can, you can really connect with your, with your folks. Uh, another reason to do audio versus YouTube, especially, um, let's say you have a, you come up with a show idea and you're like doing a podcast and all of a sudden it hits and you're getting thousands of listens a week and you're like going, oh yeah, this is great. Uh, now I want to turn it into something. Maybe I can make some money off of this thing, right? Uh, the advertising opportunities for podcasting are, I don't want to say better because I know people, people on YouTube live off of YouTube money. There are people that do that. I mean, PewDiePie made 12 million off of YouTube or whatever. Um, but that, you know, that's one guy. Uh, and if you're doing it one guy out of the 1%, that's one 13 millionth. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's a really, YouTube is just really hard to make, to make things work for you. And I think it's easier when you look at podcasting, especially monetization, it's cheaper to create, to create the stuff. Therefore it's easier to make money on the stuff. I'm not saying you're going to be rich or anything like that, but you can make money off of it um, if you play your cards right. And, you know, if, you, if, you're, if you've got a popular show, um, one of the things that people can't do on a podcast yet is ad block. So all of your downloads count. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, anything else for... Uh, audio versus YouTube. I think, I think that kind of covers it. Yeah. There was a, a question in the chat from uh, LOTI podcast and wanted to know if you've, if you've ever shared the CTR numbers per episode before. No. Mm -mm. Yeah. Um, I, and I don't think you've ever shared it publicly. I no. will say that it was, 
it was um, probably about at our one year anniversary, we had uh, roughly, I want to say three quarters of a million downloads, mm -hmm. which I thought was pretty mind blowing. Yeah, that's very mind blowing. And so, yeah, that's, I don't really pay attention to numbers um, too much. I, cause I know that they fluctuate and I know that people will be people and they'll do the thing and, and you know, it's all good when it comes down to it. So, yeah. Well, and I think statistically convert to rate has been the second largest wow podcast for some time. Um, yeah. And so I think that's fair to say as well. And it is, <laughs> it's a lot of, that's a lot of downloads with three quarters of a million in a in in year one that's huge yeah and since and since then we've surpassed it but you know i i don't look at those numbers too much because i'm I, I just i don't need to mm -hmm. i'm like as long as i'm i feel like i'm making a good show and as long as i feel like i'm that people are listening and and having a good time with it then that's good that's great mm -hmm. um so. spencer actually asked a question about um free inexpensive audio recording or editing software. So maybe you want to talk a little bit about software next. Um, actually, let me talk about microphones first. Oh, I wanna, sure. Yeah. I want to talk because I'm going to definitely talk about software uh, and I'm going to definitely talk about mics because I know that a lot of people want to know about equipment and stuff like that. And I, and I kind of cover it in, um, in the book that I'm writing or in the quick start guide that I'm writing. Uh, but I do want to say... Wait, hold on one second while I, I'm going to open it up for reference. Uh, there we go. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I, I know that that's a thing. And I came up, I stumbled upon something while I was doing my research too, which means that there's another option, especially when it comes to software. And I think you're going to like it because it's uh, it's pretty good. It's kind of a nice, happy medium. All right, let's talk a little bit about mics. And I will break out a couple of different ones. Um, show and tell time. It, yeah, we'll do a little bit of show and tell. And we'll talk about um, different things. Uh, first of all, there are two different types of mics, especially when you're talking about broadcast um, microphones. Yeah, I mean, there's stuff like shotguns and and uh, lavalier mics. Uh, you know, the little uh, things that you, the TV guys wear. And there's there's a mic for every job, right? Mm -hmm. So, depending on your job, there will be a different microphone. Uh, if you are recording musical instruments, you'll probably grab something like an SM57 or something like that, and just kind of like this little dynamic mic that. Holds, holds up well while you're beating a drum to death. Um, and then you'll have other ones that are that are built for voice. You'll have ones that are built for environmental sounds. You'll have ones that are built to listen at long distances like shotgun mics with these super cardioid patterns that kind of go out and you'll see, you know, the the parabola mics that they use at, at football games. You know, those guys holding a big dish and they're steering it around, really trying to get all the sounds of the game. Every mic has a job. Uh, and so you need to think about what job your mic needs to perform. Uh, for podcasting, you're talking mainly, mainly about two different types of mics. There is a condenser mic. Uh, and this would include the Yeti, which I despise. For many reasons, <laughs> uh, and uh, also like there are beautiful condenser mics that are great for voiceover work, but you have to be in a in a quiet room because condenser mics can pick up a lot of garbage, uh, and they don't really negate uh, noise from the side of your of of wherever you're talking into. They don't. You know, the, there's no real fall off there. There's, you know, they pick up a lot of stuff. You can hear a dog barking down the street. Um, and if you're in a busy area, that could really be detrimental to your sound. Uh, so mainly the one that I will recommend is a dynamic mic. And I have a few. So here's, here's, uh, this, I'll show you a condenser mic that I have. Um, this is the AT4047. It's, uh, it's, 
Audio uh, Technica, and I, I use that for voiceover. Um, it's it's one of the tools that I use for voiceover stuff. Uh, and but the but the Blue Yeti would fall into that. Um, I do have one recommendation that I can that I have for condenser mics, um, but then the other kind would be a dynamic mic. Dynamic mics can range from handheld ones like this one. Uh, this is the ATR2100 USB, uh, and I'll throw up all this stuff on the screen here in a minute. Uh, but this is a great little handheld, fairly cheap microphone uh, that has USB and XLR plugs. So you can plug it into your computer directly with USB or see that three pin thing. You can plug that into an audio interface. Uh, and this one also has a... Uh, a little plug for a headphone and a dial so that you can actually dial up and down the, the, the sound. So you can monitor yourself straight from the mic. Very, very cool. Um, it can range. So dynamic, dynamic mics uh, can range from the handheld to the one that I'm talking out of, which is the PR40, the Heil PR40, um, or the one that Jules uses. Which is yes, uh, the, I have the Shure SM7B. Yes, the Shure SM7B. Boom, there it is right there. Uh, and these mics are work better in noisy, noisier areas than the condenser mics do for sure. Um, although I'd still say try to control your environment as much as possible. <laughs> uh, and here are my other suggestions. So like I said, the Audio-Technica ATR2100 USB, that's the handheld that I showed you. And again, that can plug directly into, into your computer. You don't need anything else. You just plug it in and and talk and record. That's it. Uh, another this one that one I- goes around 20, about $80 or so retail. Yeah, and I have all the, all the prices up on the screen. Yeah, perfect. Um, so I also recommend if you, if you really want a condenser mic for some reason, you want a little bit better sound and you have a fairly quiet uh, area, I'm not going to recommend the blue. I'm not going to re recommend the Yeti. I'm going to recommend you step it up a little bit to the Audio-Technica AT2020 USB Plus. That is the one. And yes, all that stuff needs to be in there because they have a 2020, they have the 2020 USB Plus. So... Grab the USB plus again, that's a USB thing. So it has, it can plug right into your computer. It has a little bit better noise cancellation off at the sides. So if you do the right mic placement and you, and you work it, if you work the mic just right, you'll be fine. Uh, another one is the Rode Procaster. There's also the Rode Podcaster for the same price, but I'm going to recommend the, the Procaster just because it's a little bit different. It has an XLR. XLR output, that's the three-pronged uh, output thing. So you would need a, a mixer or an audio interface of some kind to, to be able to, to uh, use that. Uh, and then the other one is the Heil PR40. It's a very forgiving mic. Again, this is for different budgetary things. I got you at all sorts of different levels. So it just depends on your budget. And I will say that the ATR2100 is the place if you are starting out uh, podcasting, that is the thing you want to use. And, the, and, and the, by the way, it's yeah. on sale right now on Amazon for about $55. Nice. Yeah. So uh, that's great. Perfect. So if you're starting up a podcast, that's the one that I totally recommend for you guys. And then from there, you can always you can always ratchet up if you find that you want a little bit better sound. You can try out some of these other things, and and uh, hopefully you'll find that that your sound does improve with these other mics. And they do, they totally do. But that handheld is a great place to start. So, uh, and the the way that I do all of the recommendations is that I want to make sure that you're not just throwing money away. You know, like if, 
if you spend money on this stuff, I want you to be happy with it throughout. I don't want you to say, well, it, uh, uh, I, you know, I don't want no regrets here, guys. Um, I don't want any regrets on any of this equipment. So that's why I'm, I'm re recommending it this way as opposed to like, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say get the Yeti. I'm not going to say don't get the Yeti, but, but I'm not going to recommend it. I'm not, I'm also not going to recommend a headset mic. You know, I'm not going to recommend a game head. Don't use a game headset with a mic if you are planning on producing a quality show. If you are planning on producing a quality show, I mean, yeah, you can use a headset mic. I'm just not going to, I'm not going to uh, recommend it. There's no way. You can. Sure. You can also use your iPhone if you want or your, or your smartphone if you really want to. I'm not going to recommend that either, though, because I want you to be happy with the, with the product throughout its span. I want you to say, oh, you know what? We started, we started at a really good place and it's only getting better. That's, that's the key. Start out in a really good place where you feel confident, where you, you know, maybe you'd invest some cash. That's okay. Treat yourself, you know? Uh, but, but, you know, I don't want you to spend, I don't want you to spend bad money. I want you to spend all good money on this stuff. So, that's why I recommend it that way. Got some questions for you. Yeah. That's microphones. Uh -huh. uh, Jaeger Killer said, what do you think about the ATR 2500 USB by Audio Technica? I have not tried that one, um, but I that is a condenser mic, if I'm not mistaken. I, will, I can look it up. Uh, ATR 2500. It is a condenser mic. Right. Um, and it is $83. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Cause when you, when you start going, so when you, that's like low dough, um, broadcast condenser mic that is low dough. And when, when you get down to the lower price ranges, not all the details are are there so and and just looking at it i i couldn't say i know that people use it though yeah and, and how many people really do need a condenser mic for a situation where you actually have two hosts or three hosts in the same room okay so if you're in the same room you you absolutely need uh dynamic mics and i i totally would recommend uh again the atr atr 2100 um for especially for multiple people, number one because it's cheap, uh, but the other reason is because you can really direct your voice into this thing, um, and it takes a lot. It takes a good beating as well. Uh, so it travels. This is actually the mic that's in my go bag for when I'm recording on uh, on site. Mm -hmm. So we took those to BlizzCon, right? Yeah, we took them to BlizzCon. So. Um, but it's a it's a really solid mic. It's not you know it's not the best mic. No, it's not. But it's good, and it's it's a quality mic, and it has lots of different options for you, and you can listen to yourself, and you can do all the you know. So, so there. Cool. There. Uh, Nymphadora wants to know: Do you have any recommendations that are upgrades from the twenty one hundred that's dynamic but not quite two hundred dollars? Uh, no. Uh, because there really aren't many out there that are when you when you start talking dynamic mics <clears throat> excuse me um it starts to get a little pricier that's it's true because they have to worry about sensitivity and blah 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 and try to figure out the noise canceling thing and well not, not noise canceling but just kind of like the fall off from from you know environmental noises and stuff and such uh so no not really um, and remember that I'm just going to flip back to this thing. Those last two, uh, mics that I recommend the Procaster and the Heil PR 40, those both need an audio interface to your computer. And so if you're doing that, you're upping your budget by another probably hundred bucks because even a little, um, Hold on one second. I'm going to grab the uh, 
the audio interface. Hold on one second. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, I have it. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> an audio interface. I think this is the... Yeah, this is not this is not the one that I'd recommend, but this is the brand that I recommend. Uh, this is a and it's dusty, mm, lovely because I haven't used it in a while. Uh, but this is a Focusrite, and this is a two i four. I recommend the two i two. I have the two i two. Or there's actually a solo one as well, mm -hmm. I think. But uh, the Focusrite Scarlet series of audio interfaces, they're great. I love them. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So that's what I would recommend. Um, and that costs about a hundred bucks. That's just the way it is. There is, there are also, uh, sorry. I have my, my headset, not my headset. My, uh, earbuds are the wires getting all messed up. Uh, too much. <laughs> Um, good question. Audio interface or USB mixer? There are USB mixers out there. I have one. I have a Yamaha MG10XU that I take with me on the, ro on the road. Um, and that's because I want to plug in. If you're plugging in multiple mics, then you need it. Then you need it like a mixer type of thing where you can plug in multiple mics or, or whatever. If it's just yourself, I totally recommend just getting a... And it, if it's just yourself, you're in a room, uh, you're in the same place every time. Just get a, just get one of these guys. It's going to be less, it's less expensive for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, and I would also recommend that that you pay attention to buying cheap stuff is cheap. Uh, and there are reasons why you don't buy cheap stuff, like. Uh, and I know that people are going to jump on me as soon as I mentioned brands, right? But I'm not a big Behringer fan. I'm just not a fan. They they make the they make budget uh stuff. Mm -hmm. They make stuff for a budget, which is great. Somebody's got to do it and they do it. And they're the they're the largest budget uh audio equipment guys out there. I don't like their stuff. I won't <laughs> until I'm proven differently. I cannot recommend their stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe wires, but that's about it. Or something like that. Like something small. But eh, a mixer, I don't like their, I don't, I just don't like them. I'm sorry. Yeah. I know I'm kind of a snob and I admit that. But again, it's about recommending stuff that I think that you guys will like over a long, over the long period. So. And trust me, we've, we've had a lot of this, the discussions, especially, you know, the Yeti is something that is recommended by a lot of people with mm -hmm. the beginner podcaster. And so he and I honestly sat down and just, and he said, I can't recommend it. I can't recommend it. And I said, well, you're going to get backlash on that because it is so recommended. Right. Um, but the one thing that you got to know about Pat is that he wants to recommend to you the way to do it the best way for the, for the best, the best product at the end. Best bang for your buck. Right. And so that's why, you know, doesn't mean you can't go out and get the things that you've been hearing other people talk about. Right. This is just his recommendation. He's not going to recommend them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Spencer, yes, I also uh, really like Mackie products. Uh, Mackie products are great as well. Uh, Mackie, Focusrite, um, you know, those guys make some really quality stuff uh, no matter what it is. So uh, it's great. I also have a Mackie uh, mixer as well. But that's not USB. So, yeah, I'm trying not to screw you guys over. That's true. <laughs> um, so the question from Poop Tech came in of saying, how do you feel about the newer NW700? Real good product review, but the pricing makes me a bit fearful of it. It's a it's a pretty low-end pricing. On the one hand, it's cheap, and I wouldn't be out much. But on the other, it's cheap, and I don't know the sound quality. Have you ever heard anything on it? Uh, which one? The newer N E E W E R no, I N W seven hundred. I don't. I don't know it. I I know that I've they never do. Heard this brand. Yeah, it's it's kind of one of those things. If you are trying something out, uh, and you don't know what it is, look online. Look to recommendations, and if you're buying online, make sure that they have a return policy. 
make sure you know you understand what the return policy is because i i can't recommend something that i haven't tried um except i'm going to later <laughs> um but uh but i just found it so so there um i'm not gonna i'm not gonna recommend something that i haven't heard anything from that's for sure uh and if it's low budget stuff if it's a if it's a budget item then it's even more sketchy and i don't I, again i'm not i don't want you to throw away your money so make sure that you get a good return policy all right we have to move on to uh software yes real quick and the the one thing that i want to say about software is <sighs> i will reluctantly uh recommend audacity with a big asterisk on it uh and that leads me to a discussion about destructive versus non-destructive software when it comes to software you record yourself and now it's time to edit what are you going to use to record and edit yourself with and there are a few different ways that you can go about it if you're on a mac you have GarageBand already there use it it's a great program uh and it's non-destructive i'll get to what that means in just a second or like i use logic that costs money so i'm not going to necessarily recommend it for the new podcaster but uh that is also non-destructive uh there is adobe audition if you already have the adobe creative suite it's a it's a nice little step up from audacity for sure and it's non-destructive audacity is destructive and that means that when you edit it it can change the the actual waveform of your so if you like throw on an eq it will change the waveform for you which if you're doing some simple things it's not that not that big of a deal so a lot of people just kind of live with it and they say well you know i'm not planning on putting effects on it i just want to make sure that the levels are right and get it out the door okay well then in that case it doesn't really matter audacity is a great little free program but if you're doing anything with effects if you're trying to like normalize the sound or if you're trying to EQ it or if you're trying to do whatever, it's actually changing the, the waveform uh, that uh, of your audio. And the reason that that's a problem is that things like digital noise uh, can get in there. Uh, you can, you know, change the, I mean, it can, it, it starts really kind of affecting it. The more effects you put on there, um, the more it can really hurt your overall production or or at least your 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 vision for your show it can hurt that you know if you want a really high quality audio show and you're using audacity and you're trying to use these effects you better do it the right way otherwise you could get screwed and at one at some point you may hit a point where you cannot undo the damage and so i recommend uh, non-destructive programs and they are right here so GarageBand for the Macintosh it's free it's there use it Adobe Audition for Mac and PC it's part of the creative suite or it's 20 bucks a month kind of expensive in my opinion so I found something the other day and it's called Hindenburg Journalist it's cross-platform, Mac and PC, and for the initial version, it's 95 bucks total. Mm. Yeah, this one's new even to me. Yes. And for the pro version, it's 375 bucks. Now, I would recommend if you have the budget and you really want to put together a quality show, maybe not, maybe not uh, right away, but... I kind of almost want to say just get the pro version. Um, it's really, really cool. So what this will do is it will kind of help you. It, it's built to help podcasters and uh, audio journalists and all that kind of stuff. So you, it's kind of a plug and play, right? It will try to 
um, bump your levels up to the right amount magically, you know? So it will help you along the way. It's, it's built to help you along the way. And if you look up Hindenburg Journalist uh, on the, uh, their website, you'll see exactly all of the different um, features and uh, reasons why uh, you might like this. A little bit less editing on the back end is not a bad idea, right? So you just record your voice. You can add sound and music, put it together, publish. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. And it's, and it's fairly new. And so I didn't realize it until I was already into writing this guide that this thing was out there and I've heard nothing but good things about it. I'm going to definitely, I'm going to try the 30 day version, try the 30 day ver version, see what you think. Cause, Oh, I think it's good. I think it'll be really, really good. If it, if it does everything that it says, and if all the people that I've seen talking about this are right, this could be a great little program. So there, I like this. I then, like it. And then finally I'll, I'll, Reluctantly recommend Audacity. <laughs> <laughs> so, those are uh, those are those ones. Yeah, and if you're just doing simple edits, uh, you know Audacity isn't bad. I think that the um, the uh, podcast, uh, the Hindenburg uh, journalist one, should be pretty good. And it's and it, if it, you're all you want to do is just some simple stuff, I would just get the ninety five dollar one and just be done. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, and, uh, with software, all you really need to know for podcasts, especially is how to bring, uh, like sounds in and stuff like that, how to import stuff, right? You need to know how to, uh, how to cut and how to fade. That's about it. It's not too tough. The stuff for podcasting is not that tough. Now, if you're like doing music production and all this kind of crazy crap and trying to throw in all sorts of effects and have 32 lines of sound running through, then it's a little bit more complex. Then you might need some, some different help <laughs> for that. But I don't think it, I don't think it's, I don't know. Jules, did you have any issues when you were first editing? Well, I think the, the very first um, time that I really tried to edit was learning GarageBand. And I was lucky enough to have your help because <laughs> you were like, you know, this is how you do this. Because I was a noob noob mm -hmm. on how to do it. Right. Um, I really like GarageBand for it. Um, but Audition, Adobe Audition is very um, user friendly as well. Um, I actually have Logic. And unless you are a trained audio professional, uh, Logic is a little over the beginner's head. Mm hmm it's pretty high. Um, so I don't, the only time I use audacity is when I'm laying down a track. Um, and then I move it into at a uh, garage band to edit on a Mac. So that's, that's how I've been doing things for four and a half years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Spencer just wrote a nightmare scenario that happened in audacity for him, which is another reason why I don't really, I don't really trust it, but mm -hmm. I know lots of people use it. And so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm going to say use it at your own risk and yes, I'll recommend it only because it's free. And mm -hmm. because I know that people use it and are, have success with it. Right. Although it all comes with uh, a big asterisk on it. So, <laughs> uh, and I saw that uh, Aldrich said, uh, do you suggest noting where edits may be needed while recording the podcast? Usually no. No. Uh, and for the most part now, these days, I don't edit at all. I don't. Um, I think you should actually talk a little bit about oh. that because um, that was something that was mentioned earlier about um, a co-host wanting all of the ums and ahs removed from the edit nope. for that, which was taking tremendous I, amounts of time. You know, you know what I say to that co-host? I say, be a better co-host. Be a better host, just in general. Or if he's saying it about you or about whoever else is on the show say, Nope, we got to be better. We have to try. We have to try to be better hosts. 
let's use this as a learning tool instead of as um you you want to use editing only when you need to i mean especially if you're trying to trying to recreate a live show right um, yeah, I mean, a good a good example of that is you are recording the live show and your co-host has someone at the door. And so see, they go answer the door. There's about 10 minutes of dead space that you got to take out. Mm -hmm. yep. But when it comes to, um, oh, gosh, I screwed up, you know, those actually just as you do it more, you just you learn how to integrate that into your show itself. Right. Uh, so. Yes, editing ums is a nightmare. It takes up more time than you need to spend on it. A lot of people are very forgiving about that stuff. Uh, and there's not there's not a huge reason to edit your stuff into oblivion. You don't need to do that. I give you permission not to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I did it a, a lot at the beginning. I, I was guilty of that myself. And I was using it as a way, but I was using the editing as a way to teach myself how to be better, or at least that's kind of the the thought process that went into it. And then after about, gosh, it was probably about a year, I just stopped and I went live to drive and everything was fine. Everything was great. Unless there was like a, a big break or something like that, or some kind of technical thing happening, which for me happens all the time <laughs> like right now like right now <laughs> uh but you know it's it's one of those things you don't have to edit it into oblivion especially if you're trying to if you have a a, a podcast like convert to raid or or you know kind of like a discussion kind of like a live round table deal uh you want it to feel and sound like you and if that's the way that you sound that's the way that you sound so let's just put it out there and then use that as a way for you to be more aware of what your crutch words are or that you sometimes stutter when you get, you know, really excited. So maybe I got to kind of tone it down a little bit or, you know, whatever the case may be, whatever these vocal issues are, don't worry about it so much on the edit. Try to correct it as you do the show, as you are, as you record the, each successive show, just get better and better and better at it. You don't have to edit it in, into oblivion. You don't have to, unless uh, the only reason that you would ever edit like that is if you're doing like an NPR style interview show or, or something along those lines, or like more of a kind of an editorial type of show where you want to piece it together with, with, uh, conversation you know like you have a narrator and then you have a conversation and then you have i don't know sound effects somewhere i don't know then you're dealing with a lot of edits then you're dealing with a lot of multiple lines of audio and all that kind of stuff and that's kind of a bear i don't know many people that really want to spend all day in the studio editing mm -hmm. i just don't i don't want to do it i'd rather just make a show so make yeah. the put put your the work ahead of time, so that you're not doing work on the back end of it. Because when it's when it when you put a show to bed, you just want to throw it up online and be done with it. Yeah, I mean, my big so. advice for you as a new podcaster: listen to your own stuff after it's done. Listen to all of it for at least a couple of episodes, and you will hear the stuff that makes you crazy about what you've said. Mm -hmm. And you will remember that the next time a microphone comes in front and, of your face. And if you have co-hosts, you can um, give them feedback. You should be able to give them feedback and you should ask for theirs. Yes. Um, this is the way you need a little bit of give and take. And you say, you know what? You are umming it up there, buddy. You are umming it up every five seconds. I love you, bud. But you really got to try to be a little bit more aware of of that and try to try to push that down a little bit see what happens mm -hmm. uh yes and this is uh for sparrow uh this is i'm only talking about audio podcasting right now i'm not talking about streaming i'm not talking about videos i'm not talking about any of that stuff because that stuff is confusing and it's it's in the periphery 
as far as I'm concerned, because mm -hmm. of the numbers that I talked about before, uh, when I was talking about YouTube videos versus Twitch streams and all that kind of stuff. If you're talking about audio podcasting, let's talk about audio podcasting. Let's not get mired into, uh, into the other muck. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's my, that's my little thing on editing, a uh, little thing on software. Um, and I see that we're at about an hour, so I'm going to, I'm going to, um, talk about one more thing and then see where you guys want to steer. And then we'll, uh, then we'll maybe, uh, call it a day. Um, by the way, if you guys want to sign up for the, the quick start guide that I'm writing, I'm currently still editing and all that kind of stuff, but go to podcastlaunchpad.com, sign up, put, put in your email, uh, and we'll, we'll get you taken care of. We'll get out all the stuff, talk to you about upcoming, uh, things like this, like, like Q and a sessions and stuff like that. So, um, let's talk a little bit about media hosting mm -hmm. because I know that this is kind of a confusing thing. Why do we have a media host? How do we get our, our finished product to iTunes? I can't up upload to iTunes. Why can't I upload to iTunes? Because they're a directory. That's the, the, there are directories and then there's a media host. It's kind of the interim. It's kind of like a web host for your website, right? You need a media host for your media. And why don't you just put it up on your website? Well, if your show gets really popular, um, you could bog down your website. You could... I mean, you, you can self-host. That's fine. Uh, I'm not going to recommend it for a new person, though. Um, just because there's a lot of technical stuff you got to know. And I, I don't want to know it. I, I know some of it. I don't want to know the rest of it. it. Scares me. Creeps me out. No. Um, but, uh, but you do want a media host because uh, it's a little separate entity. So that when people are really downloading your stuff, it won't slow down your site. It won't, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. So you want a media host. And if you look up media hosts online, there are quite a few. Uh, what you really want to look out for when you're selecting a media host is you want to make sure that you have things like unlimited bandwidth. You have the ability to have unlimited storage. Uh, you have... You know, and there are, there are different plans, different prices, stuff like that. But you want to make sure that that, that um, your RSS feed, which they will create for you, is yours. Meaning that they cannot hijack that RSS feed. Uh, like if they say, oh, no, we submit your RSS feed to iTunes for you. That's usually a bad sign. Um, that means that if you decide to leave that provider for whatever reason, you have to start up a new feed and give that to iTunes. It's kind of a bummer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and some places will change your audio for you so that it works within their, within their platform. Like Stitcher, although it's not a media host, uh, it kind of is, but it's not. Um, Stitcher will essentially download your show and then change it to fit their platform. So if you, if you have a file and it's 44, one, uh, kilohertz and by one twenty eight megabips, um, <laughs> uh, they will change it to, I don't know. I don't know whatever it is. Maybe it's 22 K 64. I mean, they'll like shrink it down and it won't sound the same. So if you are a, if you are like me, kind of an audio file and you want to keep your audio the way that you put it out there, those types of media hosts. And I think blog talk radio is one of them that changes your actual file size. Uh, so, so that it kind of comes off as, as if it's being played over AM radio instead of being played as, you know, a regular MP3. So it's kind of weird kind of weird when that happens so you want to make sure they're not changing your audio you want to make sure that you have unlimited bandwidth so that you so that no matter how popular your show gets they're not going to charge you a dime more and you want things like unlimited storage if you can if it's available uh that's kind of a lesser thing and 
all that kind of stuff. So here are my recommendations for hosting. I only have three. These are quality guys. Lipson, Blueberry, Blueberry. I don't know. There's no E. And Podbean. So those are the three that I would consider. Really, Libsyn is uh, the one that I use. They are great. Um, and they have a lot of different options, including a way to get onto um, iHeartRadio, which is uh, kind of a big app. And after, I think it's like you have to wait two months after you start before they before that option will show up. But you can actually get into iHeartRadio that way. It uh, lives in also when you publish, you can also publish uh, straight to YouTube, which is not bad. I mean, it it just shows up as like a, an audio file with your with your um, logo, and that's it. But they can upload it straight to YouTube, and I I don't I'm not I, I always say like with podcasting, YouTube and Twitch and other places support your audio file your your audio show but that's what they do they support so don't expect a ton of youtube hits or anything like that but it's a nice way to support it it's a nice way to be on the platform uh and you you want to be on that platform because a lot of people use it so just don't expect stuff from it um so those are the three uh, media hosts, they all have very variable plans and stuff like that. So you'd have to check them out individually, but they're all pretty good. So. Yes, archive dot archive is another place. But I'm I'm not going to re recommend it. But yes, um, if you're podcasting on a zero dollar budget. Why? I, for fun, I mean, I, I I get that. If it's just for fun, that's totally cool. But Libsyn has like a $5 a month option. So why not just go with those guys? Mm -hmm. I think they start at 5 bucks. So, there. Um, well, and the other thing, did you mention too about changing hosts? Did you talk about that? I talked like about RSS with, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think... You know, you start if you started with archive.org, say, and wanted to move to another uh, host, it is a little, it's very challenging to be able to do that. It can be, it can be tricky. Uh, you just have to make sure that you own your RSS feed. That's the big mm -hmm. thing. No matter what you try, just make sure that you own your RSS feed because if you don't, then it's a pain because then you have to switch everything around when it comes to directories. And when it comes to directories, I say you, um, you, have to go Google Play, iTunes. Well, iTunes first. They're the big dogs. Uh, iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. Those are the big three directories. I don't have a, I don't have a card for that. But uh, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher. Those are the big three. Um, and then, you know, you can look up podcast directories. There are hundreds of them, and go from there. As far as what you want to submit to, a lot of people, a lot of the directories. What I found. A lot of the directories will eventually place your show on in their directory because they find it in iTunes. They use iTunes as like the their directory for shows. <laughs> it's weird. So they're like leeching off of iTunes or something. I don't know. I don't get it. Mm -hmm. But iTunes is definitely the big dog. Yeah. Uh, other questions. That I might be able to get to. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be hanging out for a little bit, but I just want to leave this time for for questions from you guys. I know that I didn't I didn't hit everything, and I knew that I wasn't gonna be able to. Um. Yeah, I I have some questions that I saved throughout the um the process that did get hit. Okay. Um. I also wanted I wanted to I mentioned this in chat, but I want to know from the audience, um, what other things that you want to receive from Pat going forward about podcasting. Yep. Um, and uh, a lot of folks had said that Q and A's are helpful mm -hmm. um, for this kind of thing. So we could do very specialized, you know, content about Q and A, that kind sure. of thing. But, um, but if you guys have any additional 
uh, thoughts about that or things that you personally would be, be benefiting from, we'd like to know because as we build this quick start guide, there's definitely directions we can go. Um, the one question that Aldrich asked, yep. how much time should a person expect on, to, to expect on making a one hour episode for a podcast? Okay. So it depends on what your podcast is, is about, but let's just say that it's a, a news based podcast. Cause that's what I have uh, a lot of familiarity with. Right. So on average, now that we've got our, our uh, crap together, it takes a couple few hours to, to like sift through the news and gather it together. It might take you more or it might take you, take you less, uh, but expect a couple few hours of that. Um, and then one hour, one and a half hours, maybe two hours to put together your one hour show uh, to actually record it. And if you have technical problems, it could take days. Who knows? No, uh, but let's just say two hours to give you a bumper on the front and the back side of that. Uh, and then it depends on how you edit. If you edit like I do, it takes, I don't know, half hour to actually just like process the audio and just go, which is great. Um, and then you get your file and you go through and you, what, what you end up doing is, okay, so there's the show notes that building all that kind of stuff getting on with your show hosts, your other hosts or whoever, um, and recording the show. And then there's processing the show. And then there is um, what's called tagging. Uh, ID3 tags are a thing. And that's just like author and, you know, title and all that kind of stuff. So you want to go through and you, and you can tag your, tag your file. And then you go up and you upload it and publish it. Um, and that's, uh, usually a fairly quick process. If you've if you've already done your notes, it's it goes along fairly quick. And um, I would say you could probably put together an hour show in let's say eight, seven to ten hours mm -hmm. of work consistently. Consistently, you could do that. Um, it, and. That's why I say, why are you editing? Because you're just adding so much time to, to your show, to the, to the process of your show. You're making your show into a, you're, you're taking it from a hobby or whatever into a part-time job that maybe you're not getting paid for. Right. And then you start, and then you start feeling resentful for the show. And then you're like, oh, this isn't working the way that I wanted it to. Blah blah blah. Doubts creep in, and yeah, that's how that's how stuff goes downhill. So let's not do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, other questions. Um. So, uh, LOTI podcast said, "What do you use to tag the file?" I'm using iTunes to do it, but it's cumbersome at times. There are different tools for that. Um, some some uh, recording programs actually have a way for you to tag. Uh, in that, uh, I use iTunes. I totally use iTunes. So I just import my raw file into iTunes and I, uh, you know, put in the, the here, let me, let me open it up here real quick. And I will see what I use because <laughs> I don't remember, uh, but I do the same thing all the time. I, I put in a title for the show and for uh, here, let me just, uh, let me see what I got. Uh, put in the song title, essentially artist name, album, composer. Why well, I put in the composer, you don't have to. And then I put in the year just because, and then I put in artwork. That's all I do. Mm -hmm. Uh, the rest of the stuff comes from Libsyn when I, when I go put that stuff in there. I put in a lot of the same stuff into Libsyn as well, but I just kind of, I'm, I double tag essentially because I don't want to not tag. And I want to make sure that that information is in there because that information is important. It identifies who you are, uh, where it comes from and all that kind of stuff. So 
Right. You want to you want to make sure to do that. Yep. Um, do you put in anything else, Jules? No, I think it's really all. That's all I do. Just and do a basic. I think you. I think you do more than I do, actually, for tagging. Probably. I should probably look at what you do and uh, maybe <laughs> change it up a all little right. bit. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. I mean, you might as well. I mean, you might as well tag it as much as as much or as little as you need to to make sure that it's identifiable as yours. So. Yeah. You know, some people just put in the the you know, artist in the and the title of the show and the album and that's it. Yeah. But, you know, I like to I like to put in the art file too. For yeah, sure. Yeah, that's always a good thing. For sure. Um, one more question yeah. for you from Lagawatu. Monetization. Mm -hmm. Is it a pay per download is pay per, per download common or are they mostly tracked by use this code at checkout type ads? They're they're both, really. <laughs> and it it totally depends on the advertiser. Um, but if you're there are certain standards, I guess, for um for the clicks versus actually not for Okay, so for advertisers, normally, what I think of is I think of cost uh, cost per thousand uh, downloads, right? That's kind of what I consider to be normal, but that's but that's not the only thing I see because anytime that there's a special offer or whatever, it's like, hey, get this and I get money and you get something cool, right? So there's both kinds are out there. Both kinds are used frequently. Um. But yeah, I mean, it just depends on the advertiser. But what yeah, I think of all what I think of as normal is the is the uh, advertisers that just want downloads. And as long as you're doing it at the top of the show and the or a mid roll or something like that, hey, fancy podcast speak mid roll. What's that? <laughs> In the middle of the show somewhere. Um, or even at the end of the show. doesn't matter. How do you go about monetizing your podcast? That's not a weird question. Um, so you can go out and seek advertisers. You are welcome to do that, uh, especially if you find one that is really up your alley. Like you're doing a, a, a podcast about... Let's see, uh, a book or a, a book series or a, yeah, book series. Let's do a book series. Uh, and so you get in really good with their publisher somehow. Like you talk to the author and the author's like, oh, I, these guys are great. And, and uh, you know, you kind of hit it off. You kind of talk to their publisher and, and figure out what they need. And then the publisher says, well, you know, we have this other series. Can you advertise that for us? You say, sure, not a problem. That's one way that you can do it. Um, places like, there's a media ho host that I don't recommend. I think that they're fine people. I just don't recommend them for, for most uh, cases. Uh, if you're just starting off a show and you want to monetize immediately with zero listeners, and you don't want to work for it. And you don't care that your audio gets uh, a little mangled in the process. Uh, go to Blog Talk Radio. Blog Talk Radio, they will monetize any show. Any show. I'm not saying that you'll make really a lot of money off of it. But they will monetize any show. Um, for Libsyn, uh, I know that they do have a monetization program. I believe that the minimum number of downloads that you need per show is over 5,000. I believe that's it. So there. Uh, and then there, there are other media hosts that also do uh, monetization. I know that Blueberry does it as well. Um, I think Podbean does it. I believe they do. I'm, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that Podbean does it as well. I think so. Um, and yeah. So you'd have to, you have to have to have to check in with your media host and see what they, what they have for 
monetization through them, but you're always welcome to go out and find somebody. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. Um, I think that is the questions that I grabbed, um, okay. for these and, uh, would, I, it sounds like you guys would like more of these. It sounds like this is something you like. Good. Um, good. so what I would say is I would, I would love it if you would start emailing Pat with stuff that you'd like us to focus on for this. Sure. Like email to pat at podcastlaunchpad.com. Right. That is for all the for all the emails uh, that you want to send about podcasting. Send them to pat at podcastlaunchpad dot com, um, and uh, I will get them and and read them and respond to them. Uh, so yeah, for all the podcasting stuff, just go pat at podcastlaunchpad dot com, and you can sign up uh, with your email over at podcastlaunchpad dot com if you want to check out the uh, if you haven't yet. If you haven't signed up for the uh, for the ebook that or the e guide, I guess that I'm writing the quick start guide to podcasting, and if you have signed up for it, I just want to let you know that uh, sections one, two, three, and four are out. All that's left are like the the intro and the introduction and like little stuff like that. So like all the all the research and information has been sent out to you guys. So look in your email. And I know that Gmail is weird. It set it up in uh, what promotions was it? Tab. In, promo in the promotions tab. So you got to look over in the promotions tab uh, for some reason. Uh, and, uh, you know, I know that some people have missed that stuff. And if you're not getting it, let me know because I will get it out to you somehow. Um, but uh but yeah so there you go that's it and jules is putting out all of the different uh links for those stuff so uh if, if there's if you guys need anything else again pat at po podcast launch i can't even say it pat at podcast launch com. you gotta just wind up and say it real we quick we came up with this great name that we can't pronounce and then we tried to shorten it, and then it became uh, PodPad, and that didn't sound Which right. Was a no. It did not sound right. So, not PodPad. Well, now we call it PCLP. Right. <laughs> PCLP. But to not confuse you, podcastlaunchpad.com. That's the place where you can go to sign up. Uh, that's going to be it for today. If you guys need anything, let me know. And, uh, yeah. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for coming out for night. Bye. Bye. Uh, and I'm going to do, uh, nope, not that one. I'm going to do this one. There we go. And take that out of there. See you guys. <laughs>